Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mokalover and thank you for joining me here in TNO The Last Days of Europe in which we're playing using a special mod called TNO The Community Expansion which we're playing as a thief territory of Yugura. So if you'd like to read about that please go right ahead and here's the next one as well as we continue to go down and I can't wait to try out Yugura. So let's see. The Land of Crime. The feat of the bandits of Yugra is a known one in Russia. Two years ago, we escaped from the gulags of Orkuta, the prison state, and with Zhaba Ilsolani, or Siliani, as a guide, established ourselves in Yugorsk, mere miles south. An organized criminal community was born. The gangs divided the already poor territory and sustained themselves with the sparings of the local populace. Now winds of change are blowing in Russia. The conflict between the old guard, the Stalinists, and the League are rekindling, and we must prepare ourselves if we wish to overcome the challenges that fate brings us. The Great Bakan. Despite the different morals of each gang, the Great Bakan Jaba Isoliana, Isolani, managed to maintain some semblance of order in the territory. He is seen as the guiding light by the bands of Yugura. Despite his popularity with the common thieves, the Pakans are becoming agitated for his lack of action, mostly due to of its compliance. And the trade deals with Zatals, seen as an infringement of the Vori Code. And times these troubling rumors risk to topple Isolani from his position of power, he needs to take action as soon as possible. Lack of action must be addressed as soon as possible. So we have two, basically, uh, basically for this mod, we have 10 years worth of content. That being said, we have two routes. Oh, we have to raid and loot as well, which I love, 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 or for development. But for now, we shall see what happens. We actually have quite a bit of manpower. And we're mobilizing. Wow, one year draft, warlord recruitment. That's pretty darn nice. Now, I forgot to do this stuff, but there's not really much we can do here. Uh, 12 combo with is not terrible, honestly. That's really not bad. We start with negative, with no political power. Hmm. Not good. Well, let's see what we have. We have Lufava terror bombing, pretty normal stuff. We have the self-made men. Ooh, more political power and construction speed, not bad. And we have disorganized administration, which is god awful. The modern bogatir. If you want to hear about that, please go right ahead. An interesting story, if nothing else. A drunken lucidity. Well, what are you, Sharik? Tearing your throat? It's like we're crooks here. You were a puppy. I brought you to the house, saying a loud congregation of drunks as Jabo wobbled past a little bar. Of course, the nights were cold, but the night was exceptionally freezing. Most were drinking with their friends to stay warm, it seemed. Jabba Isoliani, uh, the de facto head of the new frozen state, was himself pissed drunk, walking home from a particularly raucous drinking session at his bar his friends liked. As he walked past the bar and reached the bombed out remains of an intersection, Jabba started to think the vodka made it a bit fuzzy. But standing at the curb, elicited a sort of mental movement he'd never felt with this much alcohol in his system. Out of nowhere, his mind was surprisingly clear. Methodically going through each and every thought, how the wind felt, how his head kind of hurt, and why he was drinking when he was the head of the whole, whole booty country. A sudden burst of lucidity hit him square in the nostril. Um, an entire nation of people. People a lot like him. Slightly drunk bandits, but people under supervision. Their little nation state, new and happy and drunk as it was, needed a leader. It needed food, water, and for, uh, infrastructure. That was the word, infrastructure. Water, guns, leadership. It needed him, Jabba, I, to stop his effing drink and get off his butt. With a new motivation, Job started walking again. It wasn't easy, and although his thinking was clear, his body was so drunker than Englishmen when their football club wins or loses. Draws. But a bit of a swagger, like working assistance through the wall, and a heart finally got to got into his dwelling. At the moment, he was living in an old pre-Soviet hotel, currently christened as a Papa Pakan Palace, against his, wishes, against his wishes. When he entered, he was quickly grabbed by one of the Asian Usulian secretaries. Several of his underlings were living here, too, until they could find suitable housing. Thank you, Leonid. I'm fine. I swear. Jabba eloquently and articulately slurred. No, sir, I don't think you are. Leon had really interrupted from a new Mario Fusco book he had found earlier, but grudgingly carried the sole ruler of Yugura up the stairs and into his bedroom. He's Leoni. Still in a stupor, physically, half rustled himself out of an already reluctant hold, waved off his underling's underling, and sat down on his desk as he shifted from super to hangover. Jabba wrote down all the things he wanted, not a long list, and all these things everyone else wanted, a much longer list. His men wanted more vodka, the few people outside of the thieves liked more food. Everyone wanted guns, trucks, oil, money, more women. Jabba went to the icebox and threw the vodka in it out the window. There's a lot to do. Let's go scavenge for loot. And, oh, we can raid against these guys? Oh, yes, please. Yes, 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 because we do have five divisions. Now, they're not great divisions, but it's five divisions. And the Talos, we don't really care about too much right now. Uh, I just want to get ready to raid, 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 raid. Come on, come on. And then Saturday night. Not Saturday Night Live, but just Saturday night. Aram Boghoisian took another long sip of his drink. Cards in hand. Good vodka was sure how to come by nowadays, wasn't it? He glanced back down to his card. 16. Would he take the risk? Aram was never much of a card counter. Or all that bright in general, perhaps. If he had done better in school, he wouldn't have spent six years in the gulag. He gulped down the last of his beer and looked right in the dealer's eyes. Hit me. The dealer begrudgingly handed him, him the five of hearts. Adam's gamble paid off. For him, Blackjack wasn't all unlike his life in a ma the Mafia. Every move was a risk. And sometimes it seemed like the best move was not to play at all, but for every chance he had to go over, for every time the house seemed to rig it against him, Aram survived. 
the frigid north. It was not just brains or brawn that separated the men from the corpses. It was cunning, and those were cunning who would find themselves rewarded, rewarded handsomely. Holding the wad of cash in his hand, Adam went back to the bar and grabbed a stool, hoping to celebrate once again, beating the house at their own game with another shot of the best vodka. There was, at least until something caught his eye, two somethings, actually, some of the nicest he had ever seen. Hey, they're beautiful. Why don't I buy you a drink? Saturday night was about to get very fun. Sometimes crime does pay. Now, why can we do this? Uh, oh, they need to have the loot. Oh, we don't come up our door. The Kurdish spider. Uncle Asian Usoyan looked at himself in the mirror, straightening the creases on his newly smuggled leather jacket. Uh, sir, the bandit mercenary stood impatiently in front of the bespoke wooden table or desk. The security burst in with still seeping a thin line of smoke, his dirty appearance and bloody nose looking out of place in the neat, uh, like, office room. Asian would, or, oh, not Asian, Aslan would turn around, sitting down at his desk, grimacing at the cigarettes. What is it? There's been a request from the great Pakan, sir. The band included sorts in the ammo problem. Go on, Usoyan already knew where this was going, but preferred to not jump to the unpleasant conclusion. We're in a skirmish around Svedlov's creature, and it got big, too big. The great Pakan requests ammo and considers your business in status, uh, capable enough to provide both the ammo and the transportation. Usoyan already know. I felt his mood plummet, and when would the great Pakan like that delivery? Now the bandit took out the cigarette, knocking some of the ashes off of it onto the floor, pacing it back between his lips. A tense silence. Usoyan cleanses his jaw. He will have to the ammo in about three hours. I have the local branch there. They should have the surplus transported quickly. Thank you, sir. The bandit turned around, charging out of the office, his boots leaving visible dirt marks on the floor. Usoyan waited for him to leave before sighing and sitting forward, interlocking his fingers, effing animals. Even the strongest web cannot withstand a determined brute. Uh, how strong is Varkuta? Honestly, how strong are they before you even trigger them? No manpower, two six divisions. Um, I don't know. Ukta? How strong is Ukta? Can we actually beat them up? No manpower, two to four. Eh, I'll do Ukta instead. The ray. The trucks rolled down on the empty road, the sounds of wheels against gravel and snow, the only sound that pierced the dead of night. The bandits inside were cleaning their weapons, getting ready for the battle that was to come for, for too long. The commander had thought that his band and his company limited themselves to small-scale raids. This time, they would perform their biggest heist yet, taking out an entire supply depot of Kosovsky's third army. A large amount of weapons that would surely fetch a handsome price in Ukraine's black market, perhaps. The Pakan himself might notice him, but Grishika, or Grishka, cr cr chuckled at the thought of the Georgian dude ever noticing anyone but the ladies of the night. His thoughts were interrupted by the screeching of the brakes. Everyone out. Let's go. Blow the gate and let's get the machine gun set up. The soldiers rushed out the trucks, blasting their submachine guns at the guard post. Galicia stepped out of the vehicle, hoping to lead his men to glory. His dreams were ended by a single well-placed bullet from a Red Army sniper. The bandits tried to flee back to the trucks, but most were cut down by machine gun fire from the outpost's experienced men. Where they should have been cries of celebration and pride, Galicia's bandits only found the cries of pain and death. We must adapt or die. Couldn't be in this circle. These are extraordinary times and unusual decisions are to be made. A circle. It's a group of the most important Pakans in the country or in the territory. This is only the second time of the summon, the first taking place at the arrival of Nugra. This civil action can be interpreted as a return of Isolani's will act and will probably silence the rumors. The Wasteland Economy. Saka screamed as his comrades had exploded from the sniper of fire. Falling backwards, feeling the burn of stomach acid rise up to the back of his throat as he felt the taste of copper in his mouth, blinded by the crimson on his face. Vadim, God, Vadim, he panicked. His panic shot was cut short with. Uh, another shot, the spark of his mind going out permanently as half of his skull came off with the speed of a flying round, slumping under the snow and staining it, of course, with red. The spot of Catherine would get out of the cover first, followed by Arseny, the two walking in utter silence approaching the dead men. Check his pockets first, looks like an officer. The bandit girl followed the sniper's orders and would lean down, beginning to rifle, riffle through what was Vadim's pockets. Anything don't like being so far in the open? No, 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 no. Just usually calm his threads and, uh, the crumbs, some giggles, or ciggies, though. Catherine would take out an intricate metal cigar case, refurbishing for holding a crappy paprigosa cigarette, flip it open, noticing this picture of what looked uh, like a Cossack and his wife. Her eyes would suddenly stop admiring it. The refined deportment of the cavalryman, the dress of the woman, effing, what are you waiting for? Can we sell anything or not? Odyssey kept his rifle aimed at the woods, turning in circles, waiting for any possible looters to come and take their prey. Yeah, probably Catherine would take the photo out, crumple it, and stick it in the bullet hole in the officer's head, cackling as she stuffed the cigarette case into her pocket. Let's go, nothing left for these losers, and soon the wolves will start swarming for them. The two would begin walking away as the two bodies began to freeze in the snow. In a world of insanity, nothing is sacred. Looks like we're doing relatively okay here for now. This is honestly a little not good for us, because look how long it's taking us to actually win here. Huh. But yeah, you got, like I said earlier, does have 10 years of content right now. Troubling developments. Isoyani leaned back in his chair, feet up on the desk, reading the reports on the recent fight, infight with the casino debtor and creditor, his mind filling with a combination of annoyance, yet at the same time morbid entertainment. A knock on the door would pull the Pakan out of his thoughts. Come in, Isoyani barked, sitting forward and tossing the file to the side. 
Rafael Bagdarasyan slipped to the door, his eyes darting around in a nervous manner. Jabba, we have a problem. Ah, oh, Raf, my dear so-called spy master, some news. Isyan is playing these little games of his. Maybe Jabba Rafael would run throughout this. Not only Usyan, it's worse. Come on, Raf, what could be worse? Darn it, Jabba, get your crap together for once. The rest of the Pakan circles licking their lips for your position. Raphael's jaw will clench. There's been rumors going around. Rumors that you're losing your grip and that you haven't got the... Raph, stop being such a darn nervous rush and get your effing point across, Isiolani growled. Picking between his teeth, his voice dripping with simmering rage. They think you're weak, Jabba. Their forces are at the brink of turning it on us. And you're out of earth strength. Raphael left a meaningful pause. Jabba also paused and then, with an exasperated sigh, pulled himself out of the chair. <sighs> darn it, Arnold's hoping to have more time. Convene the circle, it seems I can't manage it peacefully now. After all... Better stand and die than live and crawl. Just your build up. Oh, yes. Again, more. Oh, yes. Reviewing the Vori code. Yeah. Yeah, we're losing political power every single day. We have to do that immediately. The Vori vi Sakona, also known as the Thieves' Law, is a traditional rule of the conduct enforced since the escape from Fukuta. Despite its efficacy, it wasn't uh, supposed to run an entire state. We must reform the Vori code and render it viable for governing. Hey, we actually won. Look at that. Awesome. Right, Jabba. Um, there you go. If you want to read about him, please go right ahead. But, deep cuts. What did you say about my mother to you, effing Kazap? As Ayaz hissed, standing up from his dealing position next to the bottle of cheap crap beer he and his mates had decided to share. I called her a whore and effing whore, uh, Koziol. Vanya Scissors gave his brand smiles, hands traveling to his pockets, his weapon of choice in the form of a sheep shears, resting comfortably in his hand. Vanka, I don't think it's worth it. Dimitri, on the other hand, did not keep anything in his pockets. But as a right-hand man of the small gang of delinquents, he had to be present for what essentially came down to a dick-measuring contest. Shut it, it's only getting interesting. Scissors hissed through his teeth, turning back to Ayaz. So you effing sheep effort, what are you going to do about it, or what? Vanya nodded to the side, turning the opposite, opposing gang's attention to the rest of the dozen or so other young men. Uh, several armed with rusty pipes or broken bottles. Don't get the guts? I don't got the guts? You really, Ayaz, infamous for his rage, bit his tongue, barely containing himself. Really don't want this. They were alarmed, the rest of the gang, several also standing up, picking up bricks and bottles. Zvanka stopped. Dimitri reflectively took a stance, and stand finding the gas pistol in the side of his pocket, the inside of his pocket. You, keep crapping yourself. Uh, you'll be sitting in it for the rest of your life, scissors grin. Let's have, have go and burst forward. The fight was short and ugly. Several Russians fall into the ground from the grass, gas rounds and holding on to their knocked around heads. Same with several Turks, the gang's dispersing when no one had the strength to continue. See, see that? N Mitka. Vanya wheezed from exhaustion, looking around for his right hand. That's a crap. That's a... His tirade was disturbed with a pain groan. M Mitka? Oh, crap. Banka. Cough. I can't, I can't stop bleeding. I'm sorry if my accent's really bad. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce their names. I'm doing the best I can. Hey, that's not bad, though. Rifle stabilities. War sport. Not bad. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see. Is anything getting worse or better here? No, no, no. Nothing. Oh, industrial expertise is slowly going up. Look at that, huh? Go figure. Now I want to read again. So the West Siberian Thief Territory sounds awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. But yeah, I, I, I am... Yeah. I don't know. I... If so, in the future, like now the time of recording, if you if you guys know who the heck are you, Nikolai Alexievich Skidin, uh, see any mods or TNL, please let me know in the comments below. I would love, 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 love to know more about more mods. Yeah, I would love to know. If you ever see any other mods for TNL, please let me know. I want to play some. But the enemies defeated. Yay! Awesome. And of course, they have no manpower, so they're going to be easy to beat the crap out of. An unexpected summon. Uh, Aslan Usoya sat his beautiful, pristine stolen desk and thought since the breakout of a few years back. It mostly sat and thought. He thought about his past, childhood, or what little he had of that. His time on the streets and his time in the gulag. He thought about his present. His gang carved out a hunk of Yukon waste and looted what they could and were all trying to grow something. If they could get their hands on some good potatoes, they could have finally some real fresh food. Could you make some naan with potatoes? Finally thought about what was to come for the frozen crapple. It even had been ages since any kind of meeting had been held. The little circle of thieves in law made their escape uh, had convened once. Uh, uh, the, after they made their escape had convened once. One time, no one had any idea what the plan was, what to do, what to prepare for. However, Aslan knew there was an opportunity in their stagnation. They could take control. All he needed was a little more time and he could be the Pakan of the Pakans. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Boss, it was Leonid, his secretary. Come in. Leonid entered the room, strode to the boss's desk, and excitedly handed him a letter. That's from Isiolani. Good news. That can only help. He stepped back and waited patiently for Aslan to read the letter. Usyan opened the letter and began to read the very short announcement. Aslan Usyan, you've been summoned to attend the next Pakan meeting. You will receive correspondence announcing the date and time properly, with kind regards Jabba. Aslan started to sweat. His fingers shook slightly. Now, that slimy M mother F for Jabba chose now to convene a meeting to F with his plans right now. With this meeting, he finally broke the month-long silence, which will get the other Bakans on his side for a little while longer. A little while too long. 
So boss, I take that's not very good news. Suck it, equipped. Lan had leave the room for a moment. Lan had stepped out of the office. The grizzled Pakan was left a fuming mess by the news. It was him who was supposed to take control of this clown show, not that cursed Georgian. His hand had been forced. <clears throat> he need to change his strategy. From here, there would be a couple options. He could try and convince others that this meeting was just a ploy to keep them loyal for a little while, and he could find another Pakan with the same ambitions and form a coalition, or he could just kill a dude at the meeting and take control of then and there. Once again, Aslan sat and thought, kill, gre greed kills. I'm not sure, preserve the lace. Enforce regulations. Ooh. Preserve the circle secrecy. Time for formalization. Huh. Finishing touches. Oh, wow. Industrial buildup. The region of Yugura isn't as barren as somebody would think. Facilities of every kind are scattered in the territory, all along with the scars of the Gulag system. We must put them to use to be able to sustain a proper economy. Very nice. Very, very nice. Two hounds, Yusu Yam. Wrinkled his nose at the smell of cigar smoke and, and alcohol as he opened the door into the uh, darkened depths of the Great Pecan's office. Izu Alani was asleep again, his dirty boots propped up on the desk as he lay back in his leather armchair, the cap pushed down over his eyes. The Kurd's jaw clenched as he walked up to the desk and cleared his throat. Pakan Izuliani. Izuliani would grumble something similar to a swear under his breath and slowly push the visor above his eyes with his index finger. Ah, yeah, yeah, Uzuyan. Usuyan. The great Pakan smirked, finding his purposeful mispronunciation somewhat humorous. Usuyan's lips thinned out as he placed the paper list in front of Usuliani. Here's a list of the newly ascended Pakans in the last month to share. Izzyolani Yan grabbed the list lazily, his eyes beginning to scan his names and absent mindedly pronouncing a bit of whiskey. I do not drink on work days, the curd responded curtly, then I take a seat. I have no time to laze around aimlessly. Now this did cause Izzyolani to raise his eyes from the list, <coughs> measuring Uzu Yan up predatorily, before snoring and tossing the list under the desk in front of him. Uh, well, if you did your job better, Uzu Yan, maybe you would have the time. You're missing Popov and uh, uh, Kikvadiz. Next time, double check your crap before waking me up. The great Pakan would lean back into his leather chair yet again and nonchalantly push a cap back over his eyes, signaling the conversation was over and that Usuyan should take his leave. Barely containing his frustration, with teeth grinding, Usuyan left the office. In that moment, both of them shared only one thing in common, one thought, one phrase. Effing prick. How lovely. Alright. Not bad, it's a little, a little slow, but who the heck are you? Vasily Grigan. Vasily. Alright. Ah. The Bond. Report on the circle meeting of the Northern Bandits. Date redacted. NKVD salt redacted. Transcript shortened as to highlight the goals of the report. Aslan Usuyan, hereby referred to AU. The Bandit Bond is what kept us organized, comrades. Reform? Do you not see this as an effort to split us up by the leadership? <clears throat> Yaba Isolani, hereby referred to as JI. Enough. You explicit, you think you, 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 think you, your explicit. Speaking in front of. Pause. Gentlemen, I won't miss my expert words. This is a uh, string geheim. Look around. If we don't get our string geheim in order, we're going to get torn apart limb by limb. The whole system's got to go. We want to keep our power, that is. A you preposterous. Utterly preposterous. Conclusions. It seems that the internal workings of the banditry are attempting to form a new thief's law. <clears throat> Further internal investigations are being made. The communists pay attention. Expand the civilian sector? Because we can. Most of the civilians in Yuga live below the... Live below the below the poverty threshold and many die of hunger. We should focus our work on plowing new fields as most of the region remains untouched. A loyal servant, checkmate. We'll see on place the weather piece forward. <clears throat> Elo's eyes bulging as he suddenly mouthed to himself, uh, <clears throat> taking in the whole board before finally seeing how his king was locked into place and put down, sighing and scratching the back of his head. Good game, sir. The right hand man would stand up and straighten the creases of his gray jacket and corrected his worn tie. Certainly, the curd swiped the pieces into the chest box and shut it, putting it away emotion emotionlessly. Uso Yan did not like the ruffle and dirt of the average bandit, those more reminding him of some mentally deficient Green Army peasants he heard so many stories of in his childhood. But Ilo, Ilo Devdari signified the complete opposite. The man almost always well groomed, eloquent, and almost important, so most importantly, still retaining his deadliness. Anyways, while it was a good break from my duty, sir, I still need to get onto the task you gave me. Ilo would take out a cigarette, but noticing Uso Yan's grimace would silently place it back in his pocket, not requiring a worded complaint. <clears throat> and yet, for all the men's similarity to the course Kosra, Nostra grunt or corporate dog that Usuyan wanted to emulate in his men. There was still that unbreakable, lingering smell of crap on business like activity, self indulgence. Of course, Rafael Bagdasarian. Keep track of him if you may. The man may seem weak willed, but considering that he works uh, <clears throat> under the oath, he probably has several surprises that I would prefer to be neutered when the time comes. Hilo took out his butterfly knife, the feather, whistling as he flipped it open, as if 
if he's a present, uh, as and if he is open for present, so to say, the Kurt smiled, only better the lace. Report on the circle meeting of the Northern Bandits. Redacted, redacted, transcript. Uh, Jabba. Any counter argument for a lace reform? A Pakan's president of the circle. Perfect. Uh, a you, I agree, but. <clears throat> While his words were barely audible, the general consensus is along the lines of, here we are, blank, go again. Why do we not look further into how lace functions? Do we make a constant rate or an adaptive one? Maybe we should make it some exceptions. Uh, hey, you, talk to Raf about this. If it brings more into our coffers, I'll, I'll allow it. Conclusion, nothing unusual. The bandits want to parasite off of the proletariat to simply new ways. The communists, of course, are not surprised. It's very, I like, I like this. I think it's interesting. Just your up, yes, please. Expand the civilian sector, which we're doing okay, actually. We're actually doing a lot better than I thought we would. We have quite a bit of an in industry for being a warlord state. We have five. And we have three m millies. So, overall, not bad. Renovate the Ugarsk Arms Factory, but the formalization. Uh, Jabba, the public, the civvies, Aslan Usoyan. How can the circle consider itself representative of the thieves? Well, the civvies cannot even know what we want from them, gentlemen. I believe what, then, we must say must be shown to the civvies. Oh, yeah, possibly, however. You yourself said that we have to reform to survive, did you not, O Great Pakan? Hmm? Ah, yeah, yeah, hey, bad word did. Conclusions. The Northern Bandits are attempting to bid for legitimacy. Why the bandits would require legitimacy is up to the debate, but the commissariat has come to a consensus that our defenses must be bolstered. The communists are worried. At least a little bit. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, please. Renovate the Ugortsk Arms Factory. Before the end of the West Russian War, the Ugortsk Arms Factory was one of the main producers of weapons against the German scum, mostly operated by the prisoners of the Gulag system. We cannot forever depend on the weapon hoarders of Zatals. Giving the factory up and running is, of course, incredibly vital. Let's go! They refuse. Yes! Yes! I want to keep fighting them just so that we can literally kill their division if we can. Look how weak they are. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, did we kill it off? Oh, I hope we did. I hope we did. Agriculture, yes! And then repurpose the gulags? Yes, please. The northern regions of West Siberia carry the scars of the gulag system. It can be said that the whole area is used as a rash penal colony. Many remember the cold hunger. Many have lost hope during the time. Criminals, political prisoners, dissidents, innocents, people of every kind were trapped in this nightmare. The escape saved us. Isoliani gave us freedom. We will never again fall into the same errors of predecessors. We'll salvage what we can and remodel the gulags into the border fortification to protect our southern border. Beware the mannered ones. Eilo corrected his ties, the well groomed right-hand man looking out of the place in the circle's meeting place, surrounded by a few of the Pakans who were receptive to his offers and calls, some arriving with their own men. So what's this crap about? You said you were going to offer us something. Well, go ahead, Pavel Flint Kamenov tossed the cigarette aside and coughed into his hand. Ilo looked around before smiling. Gentlemen, as we all know, you are all indebted into my employer, be it ammo, men or other amenities you have ordered. So Mr. Usuyan has been wonderful enough to, as to forgive your debts. He looked through his hands to his side, several satisfied murmurs coming out of the crowd. So that's it? Couldn't that Kurdish F just send a runner's radioed? With all sides standing up, his men on the other hand not moving an inch. I did not finish, please sit down, Nilo pronounced, his expression flicking to a sudden cold stoniness. With all his bodyguards taking their rifles and aiming at their own pakan. Well, Kamenov lifted his hands and mixed a shock and rage tearing through his exterior. Sit down. Elo's face was now blank as he eyed Kamenov emotionlessly. Sit down, or your own men will blow your head open and one of them will replace you for it. Vavel's hands tightened into fists as he sat down. His bodyguards standing by his side and other Pakans also silent. The air of mistrust rippling through the circle. As I was saying, we're forgiving all of your debts, but that must come with a price, that being a small decrease in autonomy. Elo pronounced cheerfully, as you can see on Mr. Pavel's case, we <clears throat> already have you by your throat, so as you could be so kind to. Elo's grin extended up to his ears, yet his eyes weren't smiling. Not to resist? Not to resist. And beat him up again. Play six is nice. One, two, three, and we'll get four for support equipment. Is super bueno. Super bueno. We need a lot of stuff here, though, which sucks. But you know what? I'm not going to spend political power on a uh, uh, warlord development. It's never worth doing it. Hey, no. This guy's back. Anatoly, you're back. Oh, do we not kill it off? Actually, how many divisions do they have? Let's have a look here. Of course, no manpower. Oh, we did kill him off. Just repurpose the gulags. Uh, rehabilitate the Saran Paul Airport. Uh, just the supply lines, yeah, that one first. Because you can get more resources that way, and you might be able to trade them away. In order to have a professional army, we must adjust our supply lines so that all the equipment can reach the troops easily. We can repair the old railways used to transport prisoners of Forkuta, abandoned mere years ago after the collapse of the front. Thieves and merchants. Jabo is ready for the merchants. He assigned every footpad in the area to watch the road so he wouldn't be caught off guard again. 
a detachment of hunters were placed in the tall trees around camp. Thus, then, when Zlatao's convoy did come to see the bandits, he would meet them on his own terms. So when the merchants arrived, Jabal merged from his hut, flanked by four guards, armed to the teeth with the most intimidating equipment he could scavenge. It was a surprise when a single truck pulled into camp and came out a single merchant, not of death, but of opportunity. He seemed to sing when he spoke, yet his voice somehow managed to maintain integrity and directness. Jabal could only listen as a man made outrageous demands in exchange for nearly trivial promises, but portrayed them in such a way that it would make a king understand. However, the deal boiled down to this. The bandits are a brave bunch, but the lack of numbers to protect their territories properly. True, thought Java, there are occasional reports of thieves stealing from thieves. Therefore, Satas is interested in offering protection for Ugra, but requires a simple favor. The allowance of its units to pass through abandoned territory. This must be some, some mischievous plan contrived in the dark halls of Satas, but Java won't be played by the weapons or orders. He's a river of plans of mine. Just as predicted, make them trust us so that our max that may hurt. Uh, sure. That seems like a bad idea, but we'll see what happens. I think all Ugra has unique books here right now, but we'll see. Wait, do they? Oh, they might have their own unique book sheet as well, just like in general. Shining Republic, cool. This guy looks like he's seen too much stuff. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I just... Anti-fascist stuff? Zukov? Thank you for attacking. Thank you so much for making me happier. Victor. Good job, Victor. Lamentations. Mario drove to the door. Bang, bang! A revolver fire echoed through the dim hallway, narrowly avoiding him. It would take more than that to kill Mario Fusco, he thought. His assailant aimed his 38 at him. Clang! Someone had dropped a tray into the barracks. A sound later had yet to get used to. Back in Bakuta, things falling to the ground loudly meant someone near you was in trouble. And trouble meant vicious beatings. The guards there were merciless. They'd see you make the smallest mistake and they'd hit you on the spot. Not too bad, but never manageable. If you really messed up, though, they would wait. Sometimes they would wait hours, sometimes days. All it took was a moment of reprieve, smoking a cigarette, stretching, even squatting down, and they pounced. No one ever came back from a Bakuta beating the same, somewhat mad after just a couple. Lena tried to get back onto his book, but he kept on thinking and thinking about before. Bakuta was a crap hole. Before the Great Patriotic War, or whatever they called the desolation of the Russians, it was squalid and unforgiving. Beatings were constant, disease was rampant, and it was much too cold even for Siberia. Things only got worse after the war. The camp got cleaned up, but they killed all the nice people. Everyone still got sick, and it was even colder. Blokin, the eternal dude, decided making the guards even meaner was how he would maintain order. Everything was else, everything, like everything else he did, it blew up in his face. When Blokin took control of everything, his first move was to try and wrangle the gangs. He got most of them under his foot, but then tried to make the Georgian comply. Vlokin failed to see that Jabo was a bigger dude than even him, and the Vauris had enough of the Cheka BS. Half the prisoners were given guns and cigarettes if they agreed to shoot the guards. Not one refused. Political prisoners, gangsters, killers, landowners, and even a few nobles took those guns and shot the guards that had beaten us for 30 years. Of course, they were much better armed than we were, but we were just well armed enough to get the heck out of there and set up here. Things aren't a lot better than Prakuta now. We have money, guns, food, and freedom. Even the army's free, and best of all, we have books now. It had been 15 years since Leo had read a book, and now he could read whatever he wanted. With a sliver of containment in his heart, and contentment in his heart. Lena got back to his book, his assailant aimed a 38 at him, and fired. The bullet zipped past Mario's round belly, hitting the forklift he was driving, crippling the engine. Curses, nobody asked with the Fusco. Mario drew his piece and put a bullet in the large man who was chasing him. The blood dyed his back, and uh, it was black skin red. Uh, as, and as the body fell, Mario sighed and looked down at his pistol. You're gonna have to try harder than that to stop the Fusco. After all, I'm free. Rehabilitate the Saron Paul Airport. Mikhail Isoyevich Gurevich, in the past uh, Soviet aircraft designer, proposed a repair of a local Saron Paul airbase. Despite being no Novosibirsk aircraft plant, a small airport could be the decisive factor against the free aviators. Yeah, we'll see. Not Ukta this time. You get spared this time, Ukta. But not for long. We'll come back for you. Just for you, Ukta. What do we have living here? We're still mobilizing. Jesus. Come on. I want more army XP. Let us fight. Let us fight. I want to fight, 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 fight. Yay. If no one's there, we still get army XP. It's not bad. Pretty nice. Right? That's going to be... Oh, now there's someone there. You do get more, way, quite a bit more when you actually are fighting somebody or whatever. Spoils of War is very nice. Uh, let's do workers. Yay! Stability, guns, oh, good stuff like that. Love it! Redraw the gang's territory, of course. And you could, each pakan is given a certain amount of land to administrate and create profit from. Now that the restructuring work is done, we must redraw the territories of every gang so that each, everyone, has a fair amount of it. Oh, we get more stability, war sport, division, defense on core territory. Very nice. We're definitely going to need that, though, against people to our south, especially Tumen, Omsk, 
Yeah. Sverdlovsk. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. Oh, look at this. Scam sure for some looty booty. Oh, hope people try to raid us. Oh, yes, please. Jabba, Vasily. Oh, your experience gain, huh? Yeah. Jabba. Is it Jabba or is it Jabba? I don't know. Logistics are nice, though. Drawing train as well for now. Uh, we have nothing in spare, which does suck. A chance for redemption. You're late. The foreman looks sternly at the three men. Mikhail Isovich, Gurevich, uh, Sergei Vladimirovich, Ilyushin, and Artem Ivanovich Bakayan. Former plane designers before their lackluster planes got them thrown into Vorkuta. Have a selected to rebel at Saranpal Airport. On the first day of work, they arrived 23 minutes late. Sergei stepped forward and bowed an apology. My deepest apology, sir. We're hurt by a few holes in the road. Uh, you understand, Sergei Hop. No, actually, I don't. I came up the same way and I didn't have any trouble with the roads, said the foreman. Sergei's eye had immediately fallen apart to the astonishment of approximately no one. Whatever. The foreman pulled out a crumpled piece of paper, unfolded, and read aloud. Mikhail is... Aizolevich, Gurevich, Sergei Vladimirovich, Ilushin, and Artyom Ivanovich Mikoyan. You have been hired by the Thieves in Law of Yugur to restore and renovate Saranpal Airport for the purposes of civilian use and the needs of the Thieves in Law. Gurevich, you are in charge of designing a new airfield and runway. Ilushin, you are in charge of redesigning the hangars for larger planes and maintenance crews. Miokin, you are in charge of the construction of a new airport facility designed for all uses that promote the people of the thieves' territory of Yugra would require from it. Are there any questions? The foreman lowered the paper and looked out at the three remarkably short men. Artyom raised his hand. Thank you, sir, but aren't you the foreman supposed to be in charge of this operation? Artyom asked. The foreman sighed. No, you are. You three are in charge of the operation. I tell my men what you want done, and I have them do it now. Are we clear? I think so, Artyom muttered. Ilyushin clicked his tongue, and Gurevich looked out of the battered airfield. Now, what is our course, first course of action? Oh, the three, Gurevich Ger spoke first. Repair the airstrip. Once that's done, we'll be able to fly in supplies and diplomats. There's not much out here, but that'll suffice while we keep building. The foreman cracked a very, very, very small smile. Oh, on it, boss. The three stooges. All right, so now we have to make a decision. Maintain the three's responsibilities. Review the bond. Um, honestly, right now, we are a third in democracy. So, obviously, it seems like we can go with Usiyan, or we can go with Jabba. Um, honestly, if you want me to, I could probably try both routes, but I'm not, I don't really know. I think since we're still Isiolion and Third Turn Democracy, I kind of want to go that way. So, I like this one quite a bit. That's actually really nice. Time for formalization. Let's try to review the bond. They also been a problematic topic since it implies that the associate promises to abide by a quite restricting uh, code of conduct, not limited to forsaking his family right after marriage. Right of marriage, and his possibility to undertake a second job, even without considering the penalty of breaking him. Uh, death. Isioliani personally thinks in reforming heavily the section of the code, introducing different kinds of punishments, depending on the severity of the infraction, and while abolishing some harsher obligations. So we can go with that, more theoretical democracy. Um, and the game really lets us out of the question, but reform could be possible. Harsher uh, pakas impose tariffs that drain the people's savings. Even if the unpopular is the can limit the amount of money that each gang can demand from each citizen so that we can approach a more standardized tax system. Radio Yugorsk, the debut. Oh, Vorkuta. Oh, we actually beat up Vorkuta this time? Oh, we'll try. Why not? We'll try. Is this thing on? Hello? Testing one, two. Oh! Oh, we are on. Good morning, Thies in Law. You're listening to Radio Yugorsk. I'm your host, Georg Kenim, and I can just say how great it is to be out of that camp. You were all there, and you know how bad it was, but now we're free. Free as American, I can tell you that I'm, fr I'm from out there. Anyway, here's what we're on board for today. From the capital, we got some big news. The second meeting of the, bo of the bosses has finally been convened, out of months, if not years, of waiting. There's a lot of stake in, if you don't know, this meeting might just decide all of our fates. Of course, personally, I'm, the, I'm just happy to not be squatting in a camp, but I know a few anonymous folks among us that care about what's happening next. Now, our most likely course of action is that we go and shoot Blokken and his boys, which is personally my favorite course of action, however. And I do mean however. Not all of us are going to come back from that. And we're relatively evenly matched. We've got, they've got the discipline and we've got the energy. When we're out there shooting those commie dudes, make sure you hit them in the head. It'll get to them uh, to the lake of fire sooner. Of course, there's still some stuff to do around the house. There's rebuilding the old airport, sending the flyboys out there and all. Plus, we could always have a few more guns. However, I do mean, however, a little bird told me that there's something going on at the top. Something with two people who don't like each other very much. Now, there's not much information to share about it, and even less that I'm at liberty to share, but my advice to you is this. Things are going to heat up quite a bit. Quite a little bitty bit. Vorkuta. Oh, what? They paid the tribute? No. 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 Oh, are they raiding themselves? Oh. Uh, let's take a look. Take a little, little bit of look-see. Ah, yes. 
Oh, that's where Blocking is, yes. Hopefully, eventually, he does get content. So, we'll see what happens. I know for this mod, the community expansion mod, um, they're trying to get some content for I Iceland, I think, as well. And someone else I can't remember. Time for formalization. Everyone in Russia thinks of our society as disorganized. And our anarchical and look down on us formalizing the circle now could open up new diplomatic possibilities and make us be considered as possible candidates for the reunification of russia so we're gonna go far or just on the right side first so we'll see what happens um anything here we really care about not really not bad not bad yeah i want to oh we actually have a positive amount of support coming. look at that huh? nice um you guys what do you have do you have artillery on you guys i mean so we can't add anything no you don't yeah, I need 90 anti tank for that. Yeah, oof. Oof. I always go that way because this seems like the most, the best one for land auction. When you guys play as Russia, what land auction do you guys go normally? I, 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 mean, I almost always go with the attrition plan because it's so good for defense. More defense, more organization, more max entrenchment. Literally a lot of defense, so. So let me know in the comments below which way you like to go. Uh, the finishing touches. Uh, hello. Uh, the last steps of the first state-level Thief Lobs have been reached. Uh, the changes have been agreed upon. Whatever was cut, added, if kept, or improved in the review now has been put into exact words to be enforced. Some loopholes may still have to be ironed out, but all in all, the function of the state will now surely run much smoother. Well, more attack and defensive core territory, more war support, more stability, which is very nice. We lose more political power, though, which sucks. We get plus one. You get way more stability, 5% basically in the end, but you lose quite a bit of political power, which is garbage. Yeah, I don't like losing political power. Conclude the circle meeting. Every topic has been discussed, and the meeting is in conclusion. We address everything that needs to be rectified, and now the circle awaits Izzyliani's closing speech. Hey, we're here again. We can Wait, we can run him that fast? Holy crap. Go, go, go. They don't look that strong. Kill them, kill them, kill them. Actually, holy crap, they do look strong. Maybe that was a bad idea. My bad. Oh, there's another one there, too. Oh, that ship. Oh. I guess we'll see what happens. Oh, that's not good. Come on. Can we actually... Oh. Well, there we go. Yes, we've got two army XP now. Oh! Oh, look at that. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Um, uh, from... Go ahead. Uh, kind of awkward, but okay. Oh yeah, we're defending mountains. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty nice. I think we're gonna win there. So, is he on his closing speech? The last and only time the circles convened the Great Pecan gave a closing speech to encourage and restore the morale of the thieves. In extraordinary times like these, it is almost mandatory. Fear the quiet one. So what is this about? Nor Sultan Grimace at Raphael. The man sitting relaxedly in the forest, clearing, picking at something in his shoe so with a small stick, I got a fee to go back to. Uh, of course, Mr. Tinyashivbayev, of course. Though I thought it was suggested your men lower their rifles. Raphael did not let his gaze continue to look at his shoe, ignoring the two men that flanked the Kazakh Pakan. Eh, no way. There's a little, a little resistance going on with you higher-ups. I ain't got anything to hide, but... I ain't letting you go through my corpse's pocket either. Nur Sultan has sneered, not moving to, from his place. Say your piece and I'm off. Raphael sighed, scratching his head nervously. Well, this is quite uncomfortable, so I, but I do have to ask. Go on. The Pakan suddenly, uh, suddenly got into the feeling that he was being watched, but overlooked it. Raphael was famous for his cowardice and straightforwardness, and it surprised the Kazakh how he had stayed Izzyolani's right hand for so long. Well, how do I say this? As I remember that you had to loot several cities with an established capacity of around 50,000 rounds, was it? Forgive me, my ammo counting abilities have gone down recently. Nur Sultan clenched his jaw, giving a signal with a cross of his arms for the bodyguards to prepare to shoot. Yeah, I paid out the promise to the Great Pakan's forces. Why? Yeah, so several of your men reported to me about a certain deal with extra bandital. The Kazakh's blood had gone cold. Fire. Effing fire. Nur Sultan's order was cut short with a knife to the side of them to the sound of gunfire behind him. One of his bodyguards dropping dead. The Pakan sinking to his seat. His knee and hissing from the pain of the feather stuck between his ribs. Good work. Ryakov's Tayashev. He cannot recognize the unsure voice of Raphael Bagdarasin, which instead suddenly grew even and cold now. A small choir of rifle clicks sounded from behind the tree line, several dozen bandits stepping forward, circling around Nur Sultan. Why don't we talk on the terms I prefer to Mr. Tinyashibayev? This is the Eve's last stand. Oh boy. Alright, let's see if we can maybe beat these people up again. 
who has r loot? Oh, Ukta has loot. They got some looty booties, and if they got a booty, I want to loot it. Yes, yeah, Crisis. Nice, nice, nice. And we got about two months slot for uh, a lot of stuff. Ah, there it goes. Good old Madagascar. Little Thieves Last Stand. This is it. The circle meeting is over. After months of work, and we are more prepared than ever before. The conflicts in the south are about to break out, and we must act quickly if we wish to survive. And survive, we must. We must survive. Guns looking pretty good now. Support equipment looking pretty okay. It just a few. Oh, artillery's looking good, too. Wowzers. Look at all that PP. 0.18 a day. Wow. And we're building ourselves. Up. I mean, this is this is not bad until we fight for the south, of course. But still, he got quite the nose. He got quite the mustache. He got quite the hat. Our fight. Shabo stood out in front of the bustling circle of mob bosses, staring at each and every grizzled criminal veterans who gossiped and schemed with each other. The meeting had been a very mixed bag of success, although security's leader was no by any means assured. The position of Bakuta was clear, as the mad German Garibalds had said in the 30s they wanted total war. As was assumed to be foremost, Java had prepared a speech to close the meeting. He gave a sharp ahem, silencing the busy group, and began. Everyone. Bosses, seconds, ground, troops, all of you gathered here today. We have gathered, we have spoken, we have all decided. For too long, Bloken and his hellish gulags have existed on this earth, brutally beating, starving, and killing not only men like us, but innocent men. Men whose only wrongdoing was not being the same as a dead government no, not long ago. It was us in those camps, but we escaped, and those men still in there stayed behind. Now, though, we have an opportunity to save thousands, put thousands more in deserved body bags and put ourselves on the map. We have guns, men, men who can use those guns, and we have men who can aim those guns at Bloken. So, as thieving law of thieving laws, I make this demand we mobilize. We prepare for the inevitable war, the true war, the war that we're meant to fight, the war we have to fight. The people of Ukraine's voya and Sakon, soldiers and common folk, must unite to take down our greatest and deepest opponent. We will depose the king in the barbed wire casket and bury him in it. We're, when we're done with the Vakuta, there'll be nothing left but dust, blood, and the bones of those darn guards. The guns show so, so, shoved so far up their butts, you can only see the butt end. The time's come for war, and we will face Blokin and his devils. However, although we have the spirit to rip them apart, we don't have enough machine guns to do it with. If we want to truly and decisively destroy everything Blokin holds dear, we need more guns. We need better training and better equipment. The Sarampol Airport is still being renovated, and we don't have any many planes. Not only that, but we do know that the Gulags have more of all the things we need than we do. If we want to win, we have to be organized. Once we have the organization, we'll have the means to reach victory. Once Vorkuta is under our control, we'll have the means to become a real country. A real country. If we don't gear up and seize this opportunity, it might never come around again. This is it. This is our fight. The room, rather surprisingly for a disunited group of criminal leaders, erupted in unanimous applause. For the moment, the divisions and allegiance disappeared in favor of a united front against their enemy. In all aspects, it was a very successful meeting for Jabba Zios Iziolani. No mercy and forever free. Seems like we're going back here. Should do okay here. Should. Yeah, the Thieves Last Stand. I'll see what happens after this. This seems kind of interesting. Still mobilizing? No, darn. That's alright, though. Because after this, we'll get some early motorized, some tanks, fighters, you know, all that good stuff. All that good stuff. This is it. Time to get moving. Time is of the essence. We must start making our moves before the... Uh, the seaward south if we wish to pose a challenge. Easy Alani is proposing to start conquering our immediate neighbors before moving against the big fishes in the pond. Study the enemy's tactics. Oh, this one. Prepare the militia. Our current forces are miserable. We must levy our rabble to proceed with a plan, even if they don't know the way to hold an assault rifle. Yes. Hey, not bad for anti tank. It's looking not too, 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 too shabby. Even though it could use a lot more political power. Holy crap. Mm. They have nothing there. The Ural Military District. Yeah, I don't know about that. They have a ton of manpower and quite a few divisions, so. Kuta, might as well. Thank you for Kuta. Thanks for playing around with us. We appreciate it. We appreciate you being our punching bag. Oh, we actually made the city. Look at that, huh? Nice. Keep making the millies. Millies and billies. Nice. Time to get moving. 10,000 more manpower. Study the enemy's tactics. Our military academia is currently inexistent. Most of the bandits know how to break in a bank or steal a supply, but they can't hold it in a proper battle. We'll study our failures against the other warlords and elaborate complex guerrilla tactics that can give us the upper hand. Come on, fight us. Yay! Yeah, they're at 7%. Can we drop them to 4% before we win? 
Oh, yeah, 2%. Nice. Awesome. Nice here, dude. Come on, we're ready to go. We like to the past. Nice. I want to win. I want to win. Go, 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 go. I want to beat the crap out of him. Oh, look at this. Oh, another Sibby. Oh, that's really nice. Wow, up to 15. Factories. Nice. Six a month for industry. That's really awesome, actually. Study the army tactics. Ready to go. We are now prepared. Isulani's plan can now come to fruition. Short and sweet. I love it. <gasps> we have another division. Oh, it's only militia. But that's okay. I'll still rather take them than nothing. Um, let's make sure we double check this as well. Oh, okay. That yet. So government's cool. That's uh, all right. Poverty's not getting better. It's slowly getting better there. Loot? Yes. Always more loot. And people want, want to raid us, and then we can beat the crap out of them too. Ivan, Alexei, Alexander Romanov. Ro Alexander Romanov. Uh, Alter nationalism, huh? Redacted. Despotism. Cool. Some better artillery. Oh, we can purchase towed artillery. Now we're okay. We are more than okay. Ready to go. A starting step of the Republic's doorstep. Um, a starting step. Uh, the Aviators don't have a decent standing army, but their plans can prove a problem. Or we'll resort to unorthodox tactics to pick our enemy un apart unprepared. Ah, so Taos too, huh? I guess we'll see what happens. Oh wow, these guys look not very strong. I mean, the division template looks very, very good, but the divisions themselves don't look very, very strong. Out of manpower, stockpile. I can't imagine. Yeah, it's, it, they, they have nothing. They're very organized for the two guys that, that are in their division, but still. Still. I would like to get more civvies. The Verona conference ends. Oh, well, too bad for them. Go, 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 go. The starting signal is Yaba Izuani. Take a moment to clean his binoculars and his wool coat before putting them back up to his eyes. Oh, look at this. Uh, below him, dozens of soldiers were hard at work digging networks of hidden trenches and building up outposts. Anti-tank ditches were hidden in leaves and snow, and while the whole process was being greatly accelerated thanks to top-notch raiders brought in from the factories around the Talos Republic. Jabal laughed under his breath after all. The borders of the Talos was in view from where he was standing soon. He thought there wouldn't be a border left. While the great Pakani laughed, the work had already begun within the borders of the gunsmiths' republic. In the barracks, in the officers' mess, in the factory, the corruption that had always been prevalent in the Republic became the thieves' greatest weapon. First taking on the uniform of the security forces, for taking on the role of legitimate businessmen, the loyalty of several key officials, while the Zenza Taos had been brought with brave briefcases filled with gold. But those who did not comply were convinced through more physical means upon the completion of the operation. It would only take one signal to light the spark of flame and start the greatest heist in the history of Russia to steal a nation. Oh, thanks for the stuff, guys. Darn it, I just want to kill you guys off. Plan the attack. Hijack their planes? The aviators could be a good test subjects or equipment stealing a strategy. The plans will infiltrate the airbase in the middle of the night and to hijack most of their planes. We're going to use some of their trucks given to us by the Dragonov to silently steal the machines, giving us, of course, the upper hand. No one, I guess we don't have anything to loot, huh? Um, we're at six. It's about to step up, get up to eight, which is nice. Plan the attack. Their territory is barren. They don't have a qu proper defense against foot soldiers. A quick similar attack uh, to the one the Germans used against Poland would be the way forward. So why do we get support equipment? Why don't we just get more motorized that way? Oh, guns are looking really good now. Wow. Make you guys slightly tankier. We need more anti-tank, but it doesn't always work when you get it, so... Um, still point one eight. That guy, that sucks. No, so this do be looking kind of thick, though. Formula circle, not bad. Keep building, 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 building. So we'll keep reading Bokuta. So we want to keep reading people. Raiding is a way of life. But scavenging is also pretty beneficial too. March on Sorgut. Next. Uh, it seems like the game got quite a bit faster. Just another day. In the wee hour mornings, or hours of the morning, multiple border guards would suddenly be dragged out of sleep by the sound of gunfire. Battle cries and roaming of vehicles as the bandits uh, stabbed deep into the aviator's territory for the second time that week. 
Well, the adults would scramble off the dust of their rifles while the children would be taken far away from their homes to escape the incoming bloodbath. Then, the fighting. The dudes would storm the town, setting homes alight, as they grabbed anything that appeared even the slightest bit valuable. Valiant men and women would waste their lives defending what little possessions they had left, sacrificing themselves as the raiders would move further inland, taking more and more, but just as hope appeared lost, they would suddenly retreat to their dens with their arms full of stolen loot, disappearing within mere minutes. And in an hour, the only proof that they were ever whatever there would be the cooling bodies on the floor and the destruction they had wrought in their short stay. The children would return to their town to find Papa and Mama bleeding out of the cold Russian snow, and their homes reduced to little more than burning cinders in the dirt. But as life must go on, the survivors would rebuild, attempting to remake their homes and plant more crops, only to be attacked again next week. Such is life in the Russian anarchy. The resources are put to better use in their hands. Pretty much. Give us your bodies. And march on Surgut. The plan is set, supplies are prepared, the soldiers are on the border now, it's time to march on Surgut. Let's see what we can do. If we can grow them early on, that'd be awesome. And there goes Mr. Schmittler. Mm -hmm. uh, how strong are these guys? They do be looking kind of cool, though. Those manpower no divisions. Okay. We'll see. And then March. Of course, using the planes immediately would be kind of nice as well. Oh, and the German Civil War is firing now. Very pretty normal. Ah, and so it begins. The franco burgundian War. Make them comply. Uh, we have successfully occupied the territories of the free aviators. Now we must make the defeated comply and submit themselves to us. Their pilots will prove useful. The bombing's up. If you're worried about that, please go right ahead. Clear skies, dark clouds, good times. TNO, the community expansion, of course. Should be paid. Ah, uh, makes sense. Oh, even more political power. Thank you. Um, let's do schools next. Nice. Yeah, we definitely need more anti-tank. Cool. Serbs rise up. This looks like a very good national focus still, though. So, but oh, uh, the Republic's doorstep. The Republic is a particular case. Since our escape, we collaborated with Dragunov to receive supply and weapons. In exchange, we gave them money and intel. We'll use this connection to our advantage, hitting them when they least expect it, of course. Not bad. Go, 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 go. They have planes. That's all we want. Oh, Africa Shield. Nice. Create border tension. Radio silence, creating border tension. Our plan of action consists in disguising the bandits as soldiers of the Zatels, with the instruction of creating border tension, in short, damaging some of our border camps and blaming the Republic for the incidents, giving us a cast's belly to betray Dragunov. Ulanya uh, felt the uh, bead of sweat run down her temple as MIG-3 interceptor engine roared in front of her. her. The night whistling passed beyond the cockpit glass, an attack, an attack. Sure, there were raids on them. Everyone was getting raided in this hack that used to be called the Soviet Union. But no, no one ever tried to occupy them. No one ever the manpower, the motivation, strength, and yet the panic look on her officer's face when he said to lift off said everything. Her eyes caught out a small light in the distance. It was one of theirs, but why was it flying in the opposite direction? The radio whined. Oh, crap, it's them. There's those planes that got stolen. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Oliana knows that but several, thousand, several rounds ricocheted off of the wings off of an interceptor. Some fifth sense that she developed over the hundreds of flights telling her she was being followed. The radio distorted, a male voice coming through. Gah ha ha, so that's the frequency you got. Let's dance, ladies. Oliana grimaced, pulling up, doing a Nesterov loop maneuver. The darkness of the night causing the thief interceptor to miss her, the dog fighting flipping as she was able to take the following position, hammering his tail. Gotcha, you little crapper. The dog. Oh, the, the, oh, the radio whined. It seemed like the thieves were intent on assaulting them, even if they were going to go down. Well, how about this? The thief bo before her pulled up as she followed. Suddenly, his engine going silent. Ileana passing him as the thief plane fell back to earth, disappearing into the cloud cover. Had she won, it was at least a dozen seconds of attentive observation. Ratatata. Around 
slammed near her cockpit. The sound of engine appearing behind her, the radar crackling. Dead seas like you never see this one coming. Ha! Whatever maneuver he did, Ulian did not see the something so unorthodox before. This wasn't going to be easy. The amateurs versus the professionals, and they provide arms. Um, if you're running with us, please go right ahead, I suppose. Yeah. Their help is appreciated, I guess. Sure, why not? Alright, I guess I'll read anyways. Caravan of uh, trucks arrived on the premises of camp yesterday. Carrying with the crates of Kalashnikovs and other weapons, caches with helmets, vast combat rations, and pens, the attached were also handed over as complimentary, complimentary gifts. This was just in time, too, as Commissar Blank reported a lack of supplies on the front. Sir, uh, uh, the firearms manufacturers of Taos are superior to most of our current equipment. Aside from better technology, the soldiers that say that the weapons are less prone to jamming and fewer than grenades or duds. The production of quality assumes or indicates machine factories. Uh, with your permission, sir, I wish to contact the merchants again and then negotiate more contracts as these weapons can help us win the war. Earlier today, the commons were deployed uh, to blank, courtesy of Zotalis. The men participated in a brief skirmish on the border, inflicting dip disproportionate casualties on hostile forces. When questioned, the mercenaries confirmed having been organized in Zotalis itself, trained with the help of modern doctrines developed by the merchants. One of our commissars noted the soldiers displayed discipline in the face of a moral adversity, executed orders without a question, and risked their lives in the service of our state. They acted more like professional soldiers than mere mercenaries. As agreed to, so Taos received our payment, but their head merchant also claimed that the more business opportunities await us. The Mountain Republic has many more troops, which will be invaluable in turning the tide of the war. Their help, of course, is appreciated. Would you like to go in and just, like, win the war? It's not going to be that difficult, since we they have no division, so. Sir, so it would be nice this time of year. October. And you're in. Nice. We got him. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That might be it, maybe? Yes, anyway, that might be awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. Great! Well, at the Republic's doorstep, I guess we'll do that one now, this one as well. But, hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue to see what else is in store for Yukura. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.